Hello again. So in this little short video I wanted to describe how these power isolators work using a diode. Now the concept is actually quite simple. Um, so if I can explain it, uh, you should be able to use this uh, in all sorts of places throughout your base. So you can see here I've got um, some power generation. Um, so a steam generator produces 360 power, which is exactly enough to power two shields. So we'll be using that for demonstration purposes here. Uh, the water extractor uses 60 power, so we've put a combustion generator here to balance that out. So we've got plus 360 power here. So you can see if you connect that to this shield, it has full power and we've got 180 left. So if we then connect to the next shield, we have zero power, but both the shields are getting full power. Now, if you run into a situation in your base where you're pulling more power than you generate, such as this, you see all of the shields shrink. So every, uh, every component connected to this power grid will share in the power. So they all get a percentage of what they need. Uh, so you can see that even the water pump at this stage is running at diminished capacity, which is fine at this point, but is not good for other situations such as in our, uh, in our reactor. If we get our cryofluid mixes and water pumps running at diminished capacity, we'll quickly run out of cryofluid and all the reactors will shut down. So we can't have that. So how do you fix that? Well, if we, instead of, um, I'll quickly explain how the diodes work and then we'll see what happens when we, when we actually put them into practice. So you can see here we've got plus 360 power. If we connect to two of these, it drops to zero and if you then connect to a battery, any battery, all batteries, you can see that they do not fill up with power because there is no spare power. This is residual power from before. So if we connect, uh, if we connect this to there, that'll drain the power out and you'll see that it does not refill the batteries. The power output of this power grid is zero. So no power will flow into the batteries. And as you saw when I connected uh, this shield, if the power output of the grid is negative, it will of course drain the batteries. Uh, now how a diode works is it only lets power through, uh, through itself if the output direction, which would be this battery in this case. So if we connect, this is the input side and this is the output side. Power would only get from this battery through to this battery uh, if this battery has less power stored than this battery. Which means if this battery has nothing stored because the power output is zero or negative, um, then no power will be getting pushed through. So what that essentially means is that um, you can't pull more power out from this side than is spare on this side. So I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. So we'll disconnect this and We'll leave that one connected. You can see we've got 180 power spare. Now if we uh, run through this uh, this diode here, so there was 180 power spare here. You can see it's still plus 180 down there. So 180 power per second is going into this battery and can be pulled out of this battery to power this projector. If we try to connect another shield to that, well, now they're both just sharing. You can see the power is exactly half. This power grid still only gets the leftovers, which is 180. So both of these are getting half the power they need, and you can see the shields have shrunk. And you can chain these as many times as you want to prioritize different uh, power grids. So you can have a whole power grid for your reactor, for example. Um, out of this diode, you could have a connect all of your mining, your drills for all of these inputs to this power output. And then um, from those, if you put on another one of these diode packs to power the rest of your base after that, then if you end up pulling too much power for shields or menders or whatever, uh, for your defenses or your meltdowns, start pulling out a lot of power. Um, because it's on the other side of one of these diodes, all of your drills that are powering your reactors will continue to get full power because remember only the excess power, the 180, can make it through to here. No matter how much you want to pull, only that 180 is going to be available. So if we look over here, 
for the example, our boosted reactors, all six, are generating 56,700 power. That's how much power is going to come out through this diode to power everything that's connected, which is all of this. And when boosted and running at full power, uh, because all these inputs are full, um, they're not all running. So the power output it actually needs is lower. It says here negative 3,900. Um, so out of this 56,700, this amount is being used on this side of that diode of this battery. So this battery is only getting this amount minus this amount as power coming out. And we can demonstrate that all of this is safe for power usage, regardless of how much power you pull by connecting it to this monstrosity. So if we connect one of these power sets, we're pulling 80,000. That's for all of these shields and overdrives. And you can see that they're running at 60-ish percent because we're only putting out conservatively 52,000. 52,000 power, 52,700 power is coming out through here. And apparently that's enough to run all of this at about 60%. Uh, and if we tried to connect even more, it's just going to distribute the power that we have available evenly between everything that is connected directly to that grid. Um, so if you consider that this is multiple layers of defense in your base or decreasing orders of importance for what needs power, uh, what you can do to, to keep things um, flowing smoothly is take your your safety, your safety valve, let's call it, and we'll connect. So this is our main set of shields, let's say, and then we've got some secondary shields we're trying to push towards their base or something. It's okay for this to get blown out, or vice versa, maybe you want to strengthen your frontline shields and let your shields that are just back up in the base take a bit of a hit. So if we run the power up to these through there instead, this set of shields will get priority on this output power. And whatever is left after they've got all the power they need will get sent up this way. So we'll see what that looks like. And there it is. This whole section is now fully powered. This whole section is fully powered, of course. But up here, we've got even less power now. We're below 50% because these guys are getting all the power they need. And you can, you can chain this as many times as you want. And it's just decreasing priority. So... After this, now these guys are getting all the power, but there isn't even enough to run this section. So if you go look up here, there's no power left. These guys aren't getting anything. And all of these changes have no effect on this side of this diode. So that's the secret of these little diodes. They also have, seem to have the effect of smoothing out any power fluctuations, which fixes a problem of using overdrive projectors on this reactor. But their main purpose, of course, is to safeguard overdraw. So you'll see if I connect to this directly there, in fact, we'll see what it looks like if I connect the reactors directly there. So there's, if this section here draws too much power, uh, it'll come straight out of the reactors. And th if I connect this section here, this whole section will also draw power directly from there. And you can see now that here we've only got plus 25,000. So the only thing saving this from a complete drain at the moment is these overflows we put on. If we bypass this here and send all of the power through, now all the power is coming straight out of the reactors and they shut down instantly, even before they've run out of cryofluid. Because if you pull too much power out of an impact reactor, it can't even run itself and so it starts to spin down. So it's imperative that you keep the reactors isolated behind this and you keep your entire reactor with its production chain isolated behind this here. And for extra protection, uh, it would be wise to at the very least send a dedicated power line out, which you could do here, to power your titanium input to make sure that that doesn't, because cryofluid will run out much faster than your blast powder backup. So you want to keep your titanium coming in, otherwise 
without even knowing what's going on, it'll just suddenly drain and you'll be out of power. So keep your titanium flowing in by having a dedicated line out to there. And you'll be uh, you'll be set for uh, keeping your power flow safe.